Buddhist images came into existence because there was a king in Sri Lanka who had invited the Buddha many times to come, but the Buddha was in, unable to entertain his request and go to Sri Lanka. So in lieu of him going to Sri Lanka, Lord Buddha had an image of himself made, and this was delivered to the king of Sri Lanka, who was very, very happy. When the Buddha's, when the Buddha's, when a being is fully enlightened, every aspect of their body and their speech and their mind is an imprint of an aspect of enlightenment for the uh, for the viewer. So that whether we hear the Buddha's speech, we see the Buddha's form, or we think about an enlightened aspect of a Buddha, it has tremendous impact on our mind stream and benefit. Hence, from that, you have large Buddha images all over the world. People who don't understand the benefits of an image of a Buddha will say, oh, it would be better if you put that money towards charity. Yes, it would be good to put it towards charity, but there's many levels of benefit. On the ultimate level, it's the blessings of Buddha's body, speech, and mind in a person's mind stream to eradicate their, their successive, uncontrolled births in suffering and samsara. Whereas if you do general physical charities for beings, it is beneficial, but it ben benefits them in that one life. That does not mean it should not be done, it just means there are different levels of benefit. So a Buddha's body, a Buddha's form, is something that was started by Lord Buddha himself, we are told. Therefore, there's a lineage. And when we make an image of an enlightened being, whether it's Buddha Shakyamuni, Tsongkhapa, Vajrapini, we are not praying to the statue, or the painting, or the sculpture, or the tsakale, or the tanka, or um, the tata. What the image represents is an enlightened being, and we are paying respects. We are making offerings, and we are making connection through the image to an enlightened being. Some people say, well, why don't you do it directly to an enlightened being? You can, but not everybody has that kind of ability to visualize an enlightened being, understand their nature, and to see it clearly in their mind's eye. So an image helps a person very much. An image is not vital, but it's helpful. So therefore, uh, when we have an image of a body, image of a Buddha, the body of a Buddha, it represents the paramutas. I'm sorry, it represents the fully enlightened aspects of the Buddha's mind. Every aspect of the enlightenment of a Buddha. Therefore, when you make an image that is iconographically correct, then every aspect from the finger, toenail, fingernail, from the eyes, from the head, from the body, the posture, the gesture, the color, the um, uh, accoutrements, what they hold, what they wear, where they see, what they look, all represents a particular aspect of enlightenment, especially that deity and what they represent, how they bring you to enlightenment. Each deity, each Buddha, whether it's Vajrakini, Iruka, Guya Samaja, Yamataka, they have a different way of bringing you to enlightenment. They stress different aspects of enlightenment. For example, Yamataka's case is wisdom. In uh, 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 Guya Samaja's case, it's dispelling an ignorance. In Vajrabini's case, it's the uh, dissolution, destroying of desire, which is the root cause of samsara. So therefore, each Buddha stresses a particular path for you to become enlightened. And as you travel the path, all the other aspects of you that need to be transformed will follow along with it. It's like when the head of the, when the, head of the train goes, the body of the train will follow. All right? So in Vajrakini's case, it's arresting, controlling, purifying, desire, attachment. So therefore, when we have a holy image of Vajrakini like here, this is been, uh, producing Kichara, uh, when we adorn it, we are adorning it with the six different paramitas. So the different ornaments on Vajragini, for example, her earring and her necklace and her armlets and her um, skirt and all that represents the paramitas, including her body. Her body is the, is the sixth paramita. So by offering beautiful, precious items onto Vajragini, in this case, with the Vajragini, we are creating the merits 
we are creating the causes, we are creating the seeds of obtaining and accomplishing the six paramitas. Is that possible without a Buddha statue? It is. Adorning a Buddha statue is not the only way, the only method to do this. There are many methods, but that's one of the ways. Hence, in Tibet, you will see, for example, the most holiest Buddha statue is Jorunji, which is a Shakyamuni statue that's heavily adorned by Lord Tsongkhapa over 600 years ago. And people today still make ornaments, ornamental offerings and gold on the face because it is um, um, something that is a prized spiritual practice making offerings to the Buddha. So today we purchased um, custom jewelry and uh, I cannot afford real gold and real silver and real emeralds and real diamonds of magnitude. So I buy custom jewelry that are higher quality and I visualize it as real gold, real diamonds, real emeralds, real silver, real uh, uh, rubies, real sapphire, lack of sapphire, and I offer it up to Buddha Pachukini's holy body. So that's what I'm going to do now with all of you, and your help is to adorn Pachukini's body with this. So earlier we went out to pass Buddha images to the wonderful uh, people out there in a, in a particular section of, of uh, Kuala Lumpur. And then we come back, we rest a little, and now we the next arm activity is adorning with us body. Then after that, if I'm not too uh, exhausted, I'm going to be blocking the biography of a very high lama. So at least today, almost for the last 18 hours, has been doing dharma work continuously, and I think that's a good way of ushering in the lunar new year. People think um, ushering a new year should be celebrated with alcohol, getting drunk, champagne, getting dressed, you know, uh, parties and all that. For me, it's a little different. I think a good way to celebrate it is kind of uh, to do Dharma activity, to create the pauses for the rest of the year. Because for me, the Lunar New Year or the New Year or the Western New Year or the Chinese New Year, to me, it's just uh, not to be bleak, but one year closer to death. So there's not much to celebrate because it's another year. We have less to live. Uh, we can do all the good prosperity wishes we want to the other person, but the fact is it's one year less of our life. So that's how I think about it. Uh, I'm not trying to be gruesome here or morbid, but that's the truth, basically. Okay, so we have some beautiful objects. And um, can we have some incense? What it says, and to purify. Six chairs, one for TV. Martin, I don't know how to do this one. Can you do it without taking it off? 
be a challenge. You have to take it off to take off. So you just have to be flatter. This one could stick. It's okay. This one is not look funny. How do you know? Take off. Does green green look funny? Yeah. I would put one strategic green one here. This white right. Why? There's green here. It becomes green and then it becomes white. Something that matches. Mm -hmm. Beautiful design. Red is nice though. Okay. This is a bit red. Mm. <coughs> or not. This is you. It's fine. This is a I think can we exchange green here? We want to put here. There's one mistake. Is that got spotlight in it? 